We're going to change a white farmhouse dresser into cottage core. This dresser was previously painted with a blue latex paint. I sanded off as much as I could. The drawers don't close very well, so I really sanded on the drawers to get them to close better. So you can see I went down to the bare wood on a lot of parts of this dresser, and I'm wanting to cover up the blue with white. And so I took my drawers out. I thought it'd be easier to paint with the drawers out of there since everything was going to be white and I wasn't blending anything. It would be just the easiest thing to do. So I painted this entire thing with a coat of beadboard. And I went in to cover some of the edges where the drawers are, but the drawers really stuck quite badly again. So I had to... Um, sand them off a number of times when this dresser was all finished. So be careful when you're putting paint inside where the drawers need to slide because you're just going to cause a little bit more friction. So I painted the entire thing, took all the drawers out. They don't have knobs on them any longer. So it's you have to pull from the backside. And I did put the handles in backwards at this point and pull down the screw. So everything is getting a coat of beadboard and I'm thinking, this is perfect. It's going really well. <laughs> Not. I didn't notice until I was done painting the entire face of this dresser that I had bleed through. Yes, that ugly bleed through it looks like a stain, a water stain coming through your white paint. No matter how much paint you put on there, you are not going to cover it up. So the thing I had to do was take baby wipes and wipe all of this paint off thinking that I wanted the edges of this dresser to come through when I distressed it the the wood look so I took all the paint off the edges so that when I fixed my bleed through I would still have those bare wood edges to go back to that plan didn't happen either so here I just went and took all the paint off the edges for no reason. Keep watching. Plan B, weathered wood to the rescue. I painted the entire thing with weathered wood. So this was going to look like the stained wood being distressed back to when I would put the white paint back on again. So over the entire dresser with weathered wood, and I also thought that it would stop the bleed through because it is now a dark color. Yeah, that was wrong too. But the beadboard underneath the white was perfect. So it wasn't a wasted step. I just thought that it would help with the bleed through. It did not. Keep following along to find out how I fix that bleed through problem. DIY salvation solution to the rescue. This is clear. It goes on clear. I'm using a chippy brush because I don't like to wash this stuff out. It does wash out, but a chippy brush, brush is just so much easier to use. So what I did was I took this DIY Salvation Solution and went over the entire dresser. And that will keep the bleed through from coming back. 
you need to put on two coats and wait 24 hours in between those coats because that's what the directions say. I don't like to read directions. I like to do my own thing, but for the salvation solution, you really need to do what it says because otherwise you're going to still have that yucky old bleed through. You can see on the sides of the dresser that I didn't even waste the weathered wood in the center of it because I'm only distressing the edges, only painted on the edges. But the Salvation Solution went over everything. It was going to seal in that bleed through, so it had to go over every inch of wood. The two coats of Salvation Solution have dried, so now I'm going back over that weathered wood with a coat of beadboard. And beadboard, it does cover very well, but I wanted a nice solid white look, so I did two coats of beadboard over everything. When doing the second coat, I missed it with a little bit of water, which makes that paint flow a lot easier and goes further. No matter how careful you are, you're going to get excess paint on the tops and sides and bottoms of the drawer. So I, of course, like to use my fingers, so I wiped off all that excess paint while it was still wet on all the drawers. And you can tell the drawers I have to pop open from underneath. We have since filled all the holes because we're going to add different handles. Since we had taken the handle, the big handle off, I had got some more bleed through and we had sanded where we put the, filled in the cup holders. So I'm taking Salvation Solution and going right over top of the white to seal in that wood so I no longer have bleed through in these areas. This is just a touch up job, but still necessary. And I learned my lesson, so the entire top got a coat of Salvation Solution twice. Since all my handles and holes are missing on the drawers, I have to keep one drawer out at all times or I'll never get back into this dresser. Now that we have a beautiful white dresser, we are going to just distress the very edges. Not a whole lot of distressing on this one, so I'm using a baby wipe and I'm just distressing back down to that weathered wood. That weathered wood is going to be very uniform versus the um, wood, the natural wood. So again, I'm taking the drawers out as I do them because of no handles, I'll never get back into them. And I'm really distressing where the drawers fit so that they fit really well and not sticky. I had to do a little hand sanding with those as well and the inside to make the drawers fit well. So um, if you are got drawers and they don't fit very well, you're gonna have to have a lot of work going towards them to get them to open and close easily. A little touch up on the top with weathered wood. I did the entire top of this in the weathered wood so it looked like a naturally stained top. Thank you. 
After the top has got one coat of paint on it, I take my brush and I do long strokes from one side of the dresser to the other one, making sure that I'm going the same way through the entire thing. This makes that top have seamless brush marks. Now that this dresser is done finally, and it's pretty and white, we're gonna seal it up with a coat of Big Top. The DIY Big Top is all natural and does not yellow over time. That is why I really like it, and it dries as hard as nails. This is the new peony stamp from IOD. It's amazing. I just got it out of the package. So I'm gonna teach you what you need to do. You are going to get your stuff out of the way. <laughs> You're going to peel the top layer of clear plastic off. Then you're gonna take a piece of sandpaper laying the stamp down flat, you're gonna take the sandpaper and go over the stamp. What you're doing is you're removing that factory film so that your ink can really grab a hold of that stamp. So I go all the same way on the stamp with my piece of sandpaper. I do this first thing, don't take them off your, the backing. Don't take them off the backing, leave them on the backing, and then do this. Then I t give it a quarter turn, and I go over it the other way. You're not sanding hard, you're just sanding off that factory finish. Because it's got like a little film on the on the stamp so you want to get that off and if you go quarter turn you'll get it this way and then you'll get the sanding this way that's all you need to do now these stamps come with a mask Ugh. these stamps come with a mask <laughs> i the mask comes in a sheet like this and this is a two sheeter so there's two different sheets so this mask is for this sheet. I lay it on top, okay? So I lay my mask on top. And then I put a number two on all of where the masks are. Because when you take these out, You could be this way and it's backwards and you're going to try and figure out how does this go and it's not going to go. So that's why I put the number on it and I can figure out it lines up on my stamp like this. So you can put whatever you want on the stamp. Just make sure that it's recognizable from one side only. Like this one, I numbered it one. So then I number my stamp also. So this is number two. So I labeled this one number one and my mask are in here. So I put the number one like this so it would be backwards the other way. I put them back into the bag that they came in. I punch them all out so they're all out of here already. And I get rid of the excess. Get rid of that garbage while you can. This can be thrown away. Put these back into the package that it came in.
This can be stored right here. One sheet, clear plastic, sheet two, clear plastic, put it away. It's all together. All right, we're gonna put this new peony stamp on this dresser. I flipped the dresser on its back and I got the peony stamp all torn off from the backing. You're, we're gonna use a mask and uh, it's the opposite of what you would think. So we're gonna do the one that's in the foreground first and then we'll do the flowers that are in the background, all right? We got a little bit of a bevel here, so I'm gonna get try and get as good as I can on this bevel, but if it doesn't work out, that's fine because I'm gonna distress it anyway. So that is where I wanna place that first stamp. I'm gonna put it on my thin mount. This thin mount is a half of a sheet. I seem to like to work better with smaller pieces of that thin mount. So I cut it in half and it works really well. It's also like good handles for holding on to it. So we're gonna ink with IOD ink. We're gonna ink this stamp. I'm gonna pull you over to my other workstation here because this isn't flat. You want a flat surface. All right, here's my other workstation here. It's kinda Messy, it's my sawhorse. So this is an IOD ink stamp pad and this is black ink, both IOD products. I've tried to use a different ink pad from another company and they just don't work as well as the Iron Orchid Design stamp pad. So you put a little bit of black ink on your stamp pad to make sure it's nice and fresh. And I just circle it around. I'm not squeezing anymore. I'm just pushing the ink around on the stamp pad. That's all you need with that. When you store your stamp pad, store it like this, upside down, because ink pulls to the gravity and the gravity will pull the ink to the face of the stamp. So that's my little tip. Store it like that. I write what color it is because sometimes I can't tell the difference between the gray and the blue and the black when they're on the ink pad. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and ink this one. We're gonna get it nice and inked up. And again, be on a nice flat surface. My sawhorse here has a couple little divots in it so I gotta move it around. You're gonna go straight up and down. You have a little bit of open time when working with the stamp, with the ink. So it's not quite so immediate to get it on your project, but here we go. All right, here's my little handles. Now I'm gonna take this peony and I'm gonna Set it down. Not letting it go with one hand. So I wanna make sure I keep hanging on to it. This is my curve right here. So now I let that side go and try and get it into my curve as much as I can. If it doesn't all get in there, oh well. Not much I can do about it. So there's the first start of the peony stamp. All right, this flower was from my sheet two. So I need a mask that has a number two on it. Quick and fast. And then you're going to find how this goes. Even with a two on it, it's hard to line up. 
Oh, you know what? It might have to be backwards. Mm, it does have to be backwards. All right, you lay your mask down there. I did that wrong. It has to be backwards because the stamp side is up when it's in the pad, but you really want the back side of it. So that's okay. Now I know that they'll always be upside down. Now this the mask is on there and we're going to take this peony, lay it right here, get the thin mount, pick that up, make sure we didn't move the mask. We're gonna ink this up. And I'm going to set this down. Making sure that I have really crisp lines right where that mask is. And there it's on the back side because it's masked right there. Looks like it's back behind that stamp. Using the typesetting font stamp, I added the words on here and completed the look of the dresser. I gave the top a coat of Big Top, and since it's going to be a surface that's going to be used quite often, I gave it a second coat of Big Top. I used kind of too small of a brush. It was what I had at the moment. So um, for the second coat, I gave it a much larger brush. We needed the handles on it. They were the cup handles. My husband is extremely picky on where they go and if they're in the center. So he made this template out of chipboard and then he put the handle there and took the chipboard, placed it on top of the drawer and could drill his pilot holes. He did the same thing for the smaller one here. I tried to capture him doing the measurements of it. I have no idea what he did. There's a lot of calculator work. Um, he builds windows. I don't know what he's doing, but he's finding the center on the template. That's all you really need to know is find the center on a template and then put that on your drawer to drill your pilot holes. And then your cup holders or your cup pulls will be in the correct spot. Some of the inside of the drawers were missing the drawer stops as well. So my husband made some dowels and put them into the holes and they work perfect.
Thanks for watching. Do you paint a lot of white or are you afraid? I don't paint a lot of white for myself because color is just so pretty, but it goes in my house well. And I do love white painted pieces. I paint a lot of white and a lot of light gray for clients on their custom jobs. So I've learned how to deal with white. White usually bleeds. If you have bleed through, which if you still don't know what bleed through is, it's like a stain that comes through and looks like it's drippy, like drippy, smoky looking stain. And no matter how many coats of white you put on, it's just going to keep coming back through. The DIY salvation solution is what you need. There's clear. This one's white. <laughs> there's white and there's clear. If you want to distress back to the natural wood, you will use white. If you don't mind not coming back through to the natural wood, did I say white? If you, <laughs> let's try this again. All right, if you, for using Salvation Solution, if you want to distress back to the natural wood, If you want to distress back to the natural wood, use clear. You'll go right back to the natural wood. This goes on clear. It's kind of got like a purpley finish to it, but this is what you want if you want to distress back to that natural wood. If you don't care, you're going to use white. And then this will not distress off unless you use sandpaper and a sander. So this this solution is tough. That is why there's a white and a clear. It is salvation solution and it's all you need for those wood bleeding projects but that you're trying to paint white. Here's a tip for you. These cans will rust. They'll rust and you'll be hard to get your covers on and off. So I open one of these up and I put it in here. This is a FIFO bottle. And I put my salvation solution in here and I no longer have that trouble. So even if you don't use a lot, if you're buying this, invest in one of these and put it in here. It'll last forever in here and it will not rust the can. Thanks for watching the video. I sure hope you enjoyed the white dresser. It looks pretty sweet. It would go in my house because I live by a farm. I live in farm country, and I am a farmhouse styling girl with a little bit of color. I'll add color in other pieces, like smaller pieces, and I'll keep my walls and my furniture white. If you need any DIY product, head on over to thepaintedphotographer.com and I'll ship it right to your front door. If you're local, stop on in at Foreman's Farm Home Tina and Jen will be more than happy to help you out and they recommend this product as well. It's a salvation solution. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share it with your friends. I'd really appreciate it. And until next time, happy painting.